Mr. Cal Calhoun and Mrs. Wiseman. Okay. So. Fantastic. What are we going to do? We are going to look at some um, author's works, and we're going to look at it so that we can um, copy their styles in our own writing. How about that? Is that clear enough? Yeah. Have you done that before? No. No? First time? Is that right? Well, last year, but I didn't pass on that part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. My name is Bruce, and uh, I've talked for 122 years. And uh, what we're doing today is making a tape for some other teachers so we can show them this particular kind of thing that we're going to do. Okay? And uh, I'll be 123 next month, right? I'll give you a picture of what, what this is like. The, uh, when we're learning to write, we learn to write by reading, basically. It's more than anything else. You read people. If we didn't have reading, we wouldn't even know there was writing, right? Long, long time ago, there wasn't writing. And so nobody, when they were growing up, knew you could write because no one could write. There weren't any books. But today we have thousands and thousands and thousands of books. And one of the ways you write is by studying how writers write. So when you read, part of what your head learns to do is to think, I'm going to write. And this may give me some ideas. Right? So I'm going to, uh, we're going to give you a number of things to read. Take a minute or two with this reading. And I'm going to give you one for every two people. I want you to read them, and if you have trouble with a word, I want you to wave at me, okay? And I'll come around, or one of these other people will come around and we'll help you with that word, okay? But I want you to read these, and as you read them, I want you to think to yourself, not just what do they say, but how did the writer do it? What did the writer do? These are all the first lines of picture storybooks. You know, you've read picture storybooks. Some of you still do, and you did when you were little kids. Hmm? So these are the first lines. These are real good writers. I want you to think about that. So uh, we're going to pass these out, one for every two people. So you kind of work together on that. And uh, I'm going to read the uh, first one with you, and then uh, kind of leave you alone for a few minutes and have you read these to yourselves. So if you'll read that first one before I get around to you. Just read it to yourself. I think we may be short a couple. You have that one I gave you. Yeah. Turn it off before you. Yeah. Come right to that in a minute. Now I want you to come back and look at this first one with me. Can I have everybody's eyes here? I'm going to read it to you for a second. This is a character, and I want you to be thinking as you read these. How did the author? The author is introducing a book, and often introducing a character. Can I have everybody's eyes, please? Everybody. And you write, write with me, yeah? And listen very carefully to this part, because this is what sets us up. Of all things, grumbled Chester, why on earth did I have to be a pig? A pig is no better off than a cabbage or a carrot, just something to eat. But before I end up as so much sausage and ham, I intend to amount to something. I want you to think as you read these, that's about Chester, right? Chester's a pig. But I don't want you to think so much about what it's about, is how the, an author's starting a story, and you're going to write a lot of stories this next couple of years. I want you to think of what that author did to introduce that story and introduce old Chester, okay? So read through them. Uh, number five, the first word is corduroy. And that's the name of somebody. It's not like corduroy clothes. So go ahead and read 
these that are in front of you, please. Read the first page, then the second page, then the third page. You can read them silently, or you can read them aloud if you do take turns. separate out numbers one to six. So one of you open the thing up, envelope out, and pull out, pull out numbers one to six, and then put the others out of the way up on your desk. So just pull out numbers one to six, and put them between you. Put number one to six between you and put the others up out of the way on your desk. Now, what I want you to do as a pair is make groups of these. I want you to sort them. And now, wait a minute, don't start. And I, I, I've lost a couple of eyes, so I'm... I'm worried about that. I really want, want you right with me. You'll get a chance to work on your stuff. But the direction is very important. That is, I want you to read them again and take your time with this and sort them out. And I want you to put ones together where the author did the same kind of thing when they were trying to introduce the story and the character. I don't want you worrying about the names of the characters, how long these are, or anything like that. But I want you to think, when I read this thing, like, we're going on a bear hunt, we're gonna catch a big one, what a beautiful day, we're not scared, which isn't one of those you're gonna start right now. And then you compare that, with another person who said, 
the queen likes to dress smartly. So she has an enormous wardrobe for her clothes and a slightly smaller chest of drawers for all her knickers, which is underwear in British. Okay? Now, one author, the two authors are both introducing a book, but they did it a little differently. I want you to sort through these six and see if you can find some beginnings of these books that are kind of like each other. Put those in the same pile and then hunt for others, okay? No questions? Just sort two or three out and then read them all to see if there are any others that would make a pile and pull them apart into the piles. So if there are two that are alike, pull those off to one side. Take your time. It was a very curious. He wanted to find out what was It was a very curious. It was a very curious. It was a very curious. It was a very Remember, you're just working with a six. That's the six. How are we doing? Are you finding some? You got a couple that go together? Oh, okay. All right. Good. Can you find some that go together? Referred to as ladies and gentlemen here. That's the way I think about all this kind of thing. Now, I, I want, we're going to do a little bit of sharing. And so what I want you to do is I'm going to call on some people and I'm going to ask them the numbers of one of the little groups that they made. Can I ask you guys, please, can you tell us the numbers, some numbers that you put together? I want everybody else thinking about what they're doing. So take your first page here, put it in front of you, because these will be from the first page. Right? And let's listen to these first numbers. Right? Sing out real loud. Four and five. Numbers four and five. Now, this is George. He lived in the zoo. He was a good little monkey, but he was very curious. He wanted to find out what was going on outside of the zoo. And they put that with, Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited until all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. That's nice. Now, who thinks they know why these two guys put those together? Who thinks they have an idea? Ma'am? Uh, the author started the... Now, hold on. I want everybody to want to listen to what these folks are saying. See if they have the right reason. Go the ahead. author started the story, the story the same, but talking about the person, about the thing a little bit, and where, what it's hobbies and what it does, and what it wants to do. So the author started, say again, say that again, and listen very carefully and see if that's how you put them together. The author started by doing what? Taking a thing, an animal or a person, and talking about it. It has a thing or where it lives and what it's hobbies and what it wants to do. 
what it wants to do. Alright. Who would, who thinks that might be why they put those together? Who agrees with that? Right? And is that how you put them together or was it something else? Mostly, yeah. Mostly that? Anything else you want to add? That's great. That's great thinking. <coughs> nice job, and you're looking right where you need to look. The author started by telling something about the character and something about what they might do and all that. You want to share one? Okay, give us two num Give us the numbers of ones you put together. Number two, number four, number five. Number two, you put with number four and number five. <coughs> Now, why do you suppose, why do you suppose that they added number two to number four and number five? Why do you suppose they might have done that? Everybody with me? Shoot. Speak real loud, if you will. Um, it starts off with where they lived. It started off with? Where they lived. Where they lived, and something else, right? right. Okay, so they give the same kind of information. Why did you put it with that? With that reason, and that the reason they Kirsten said, and because they tell the characters. They tell the characters right away, so that's in each kind of the case. They say, this is going to be, and I want you all to do something. I want you to do this just individually. I want you to imagine that you're going to do what those authors did, and we'll start a story, all right? So I want everybody to start a story, and let's... Why don't we pick up one of these characters, okay? Let's take your, uh, this must be some pagan holiday you're celebrating, right? Uh, we have, who's this? A witch. All right, would you, all right. Have you named the witch yet? No. Well, let's not name them together, but let's think we might name as we begin our first line. And this is a, do you know what this is? A cornucopia, right, full of all sorts of the fun kinds of things that happen in the fall in New England and, and sometimes out here. Now, I want you to imagine that we're starting our story, right, and I will, I'm, I'm going to be part of, the, part of the setting here, right, so Bruce will be part of this too, but we have a witch and the witch is sitting here with my arms with a cornucopia and I want you to write in your minds, not write it down, but think it through the first line of a story about some things that are going to happen with our witch and our cornucopia and do it the way those authors did it if you can. Can you do that? Think to yourself and dream a little what would be the first line of a story about a witch and a cornucopia? And we'll just start them out with me walking around with it. When you have an idea, kind of wave at it. Listen to Nikki's first line. Everybody listen to how Nikki does it. Nikki? Once upon a time there was a witch. She was sitting at a cornucopia. Once upon a time there was a witch. She was sitting on a cornucopia. Is that part of how those big people started? You bet it is. 
You bet it is. Right. Let's add yours, sir. Speak real loud. Okay. Did the Wicked Witch sound the song of Cocaine? Would it use or cast a spell on something? Wicked witch sat on the cornucopia waiting to cast the spell on something. Hmm? Is that kind of the way the author began? Yes. Well, that's nice. By the way, I think we ought to applaud these first two people. Right? All right. Let's have another one. Yes, sir. Maggie the witch will never get off the cornucopia. Oh, Maggie the witch. Now we've added the name, right? would never get up off her cornucopia. Hmm? Is that? Pretty good. Okay. Lori? Speak with it. Right back there to your colleagues. The others. Ursula the Witch. Say again, I'm sorry. Ursula the Witch, the nice witch, loves cornucopias in the fall. Ursula the Witch, the nice witch, loved cornucopias in the fall. Is that it? Is that it? Hmm? Let's applaud those two people. Yes, sir. Once, once the Wicked Witch went in, sat on a cornucopia and fell in and had a big fiesta. Had a, fell and had a? Big fiesta. Big fiesta. Hmm. How about that? How about you? <laughs> Mary the witch stood on her cornucopia waiting to lose her balance. Oh, how about that? Yes, sir. Once there was a witch who took all the stuff out of the <coughs> cornucopia and put it into a black pot. Put it into a pot. Once there was a witch who took all the stuff out of the cornucopia and put it into a black pot. All right, now. Let's go back and read number one. Very carefully. Read number one. All right? Can we read number one together? Huh? All right, let's read number one together. Let's think about that. Ready to go? Right? Of all things. Number of Chester, why on earth did I have to be a pig? A pig is no better off than a cabbage or a carrot, just something to eat. But before I end up as so much sausage and hair, I intend to try and I have to do something. Alright. Now that author introduced the character how? What did that author do that was different from our other authors we've been talking about? Yes, ma'am. All right, say that again. Did you all hear that? Let's hear this again. Speak so everybody in the room can hear you. She said, all things number one. She heard number one. She heard number She introduced, does everybody get that? She introduced Chester in the story by doing what? Having Chester say something. Now what I'd like you to do is let's start our witch story again, all right? And can you do it by having the witch talk? Can we have the witch speak? Shoot. Shoot. Um, once upon a time, the witch said, if my cornucopia doesn't start, oh, wait. That's My cornucopia doesn't start filling up with food. Um, <laughs> um, oh, that's right. You're doing it on the fly. She said, if my cornucopia doesn't start filling up with food, and then we can begin to add something else that she might say. How about that? Can we have some applause for that one? Okay. Yes, miss. 
Oh, rats, said Winnie the Witch. I have to make a cornucopia, and I don't even know how. Well, what do you think of that? Oh, rats, yes. I have to make a cornucopia, and I don't even know how. Mm-hmm, yes, sir. Mary the Witch said, I need to fill up my cornucopia, but I don't have the stuff to make it. I need to fill it up, and I don't have the stuff I'll need to make it. What do you think might jump out that you What do you think might happen later in that story? What might happen later in that story? Shoot. But she might go up weird places and steal the stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. That might be one thing she would do. What's something else she might do? But that kind of time. Yes, ma'am. Grow some food. Yeah, she might plant a garden or something like that. Hey, well, I don't have anything this year, but maybe I will for next year or something like that. Okay. Yes, sir. Nikki, that's you're going to start one. Yeah. Um, one day, the witch said, "I'm never getting off this car to help you." One day, the witch said. I'm never going to get off this cornucopia because I like it so much. What do you think might happen to that story? Did something happen? Yes. Um, yeah. that maybe there might be a little story and she might just go off and Okay, and off she goes. Yes, sir. Um, a goblin could walk by and she might fall in love with him and walk with him. Oh, <laughs> motivation. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, she might try to do a spell such as big grass pink pajamas and make more cornucopia and stuff. So, 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 so,